Hi, welcome to Tonepedia. Meet Brett Kingsman, who is in association with Carl Martin, and today we're going to be talking about the Plexi Ranger, which is half Plexitone, half uh, Range Master, and it's supposed to be outstanding. Is it? <laughs> well, well, thank you for having me, Lee. Uh, just a, a, a polite correction: it's Kingman. No, there's no S in Kingsman. Uh, Outstanding, yes, I think it is. Uh, one half plexitone, which was already established in the Carl Martin stable of rock goodness, and the other half uh, silicon treble booster, so not uh, exactly a Dallas Master clone, probably more in line with the Hornby Skews, which I think was silicon, um, and some important low cut filters on the boost end as well. So it has a variety of uses, all of them. Rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the the, uh, the plexi tone is um, is fairly well established. We've had that on Tonepedia for some time, uh, and you were saying about it earlier because we, we uh, started talking about the the L Brown sound and these sort of things. And um, yeah, it, you know, you see people all over using it all over the world, and, and it is a, an outstandingly awesome like plexi Marshall sort of sound in a box. Uh, pedal it really is great i see it over on um, um, groups all the time um how long have you been using that uh well i've been using it or aware of it or have owned one for gosh best part of 10 years i would think maybe more um uh, since its inception really since the big purple Pro version was released. It's got to be down to 2011, 2012, maybe earlier. Yeah, definitely one of the best in its class. Yeah, yeah. Which it's why it was so easy to, 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 to take it a step further and and, uh, and port, you know, a treble booster it's in front of it. So you get the best really of both worlds. A treble boosters in front of anything sound great. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I'm not, I, don't, I wouldn't entirely agree with that because if you put one in front of something with a lot of headroom, like, you know, most of the sort of mid to high wattage blackface fenders, for instance, it's going to sound bloody awful because of that headroom where a treble booster or specifically specifically the Dallas Rangemaster was designed to help the darker sounding amps like a Vox AC30 or a JTM45, both, you know, from the early 60s. Uh, to give them a little bit more poke and and sustain, and so that really it was one of the first ever kind of overdrive pedals. Yeah. Uh, but pretty specific had to be used with a, a specific type of circuit, i.e. the two that I've just mentioned, and it definitely works better from my experience, at least, um, with those sorts of amps rather than something with high headroom um, like a you know a six L six Fender. Yeah, I, I've I've used mine with uh, 100 watt Marshall for quite some time, and uh, I love it. That would be ferocious. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah, it is. Um, but yeah, if I if I run it, I've got one of these little tube screamer heads, the TS15 TSA15H. Um, yeah, r- running it into that, you know, it does. It just compresses all day long. So I see I see what you're saying with that. It is horses, of course, is obviously. But um, yeah, when you run them into a pedal, it's a completely different kettle of fish. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what you've taken there, isn't it? it? Can you swap the order on it, or is it uh, is it the treble booster into the plexi? No, <clears throat> excuse me. No, the uh, it, there's no order swapping on this one. Uh, the The whole idea was really to keep it as simple as possible and just uh, employ the recipe that had been so time proven, which is the treble booster in front of a you know the treble booster in front of the plexi side. Uh, so that's the way that it's it's stayed. But of course, there are modern um, enhancements like the ability to shift that mid-range frequency, turn it up or down by about 15 dB. In fact, if you turn this down fully, it's just a clean boost, a 15 dB clean boost. And it's not until you select the frequency with this guy and then turn it up or down uh, that you get that extra you know, mid-range focus poke into the side of this guy. So the way that I use it is to keep the gain on the plexi tone circuit down to a moderate level, which is probably around here because it's got a lot of gain on tap. They do, yeah. And 
Um, so there's your rhythm kind of crunch sound, which is fairly dynamic with any given guitar's volume knob. And then when it becomes, you know, when the hero moment arrives for the solo, <laughs> kick this guy in and ha, 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 off you go. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> But the other benefit of the treble booster circuit, um, real and or virtual, is that it's very responsive, once again, to the old school um, exercise of writing the guitar volume knob to clean it up, which it does really well. Um, so it has a variety of uses. And, of course, if you don't want to use the plexi side and you do have an amp, uh, that it that the pedal is seeing, you know, something with a little less headroom along the lines of an AC circuit or a, a, a Marshall circuit, then this is quite adequate on its own. Um, yeah, so lots of different uses. So you can you can literally use the boost side uh, independently. Yes. Excellent. I see what you're saying. There. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I, I thought you were saying like if you kind of turn the plexi side right down and you can use it as a boost but i like it when they do that it's it really is like two pedals in one then yep two two completely independent circuits uh able to be used independently <laughs> or together as long as you like this going into this <laughs> yeah well, who wouldn't um so i'm not sure what the advantages of of having the plexi tone running into the treble booster would uh, you know well, you, you'd get a volume jump, wouldn't you? You can get you get a completely different type of um, type of boost. But um, if you can you would. if you can use them independently, you don't really need that. To be fair, you don't. But we can ask our friend Carl to to uh, experiment with an order switch. One we might prototype one just to see if it's worth doing in future releases. <laughs> yeah. uh, the other thing that I will let slip is that when I was talking to my great friend, uh, Phil Sobrano, who's an, another Melbourne guitar player over here, about this pedal when it was at its last stages of inception, he said, well, the obvious thing to do would be to port this circuit into the AC tone as well, which is the Fox AC30 emulator yeah. that you might, you're probably aware of. And then people can go out and enjoy their um, Brian May style indulgences. Or Richie Blackmore indulgences. I mean, and an AC30, I think it's pretty well known, was used for most of the machine head sessions, if I'm not mistaken. So with a treble booster. Uh, so uh, we may see that as a future release. I, of course, cannot speak for Carl Martin, but I'm hoping that they will... Uh, there's a bit of a scoop for you, Lee. Well, that's that's really cool. I'll, uh, I'll be dropping that in uh, in this week's news. That's really, really cool. I've got to say, um, viewers, um, should you wish to get one of these, you stand a chance of winning one. At the end of this uh, interview, what we'll do is we'll tell you exactly how you can get your grabby mitts on one. So keep watching. <laughs> so the brown sound. Let's talk about it. The brown sound. The brown sound. <laughs>
Uh, if you don't know what the brown sound is, I'll let Brett explain. <laughs> well, the, the brown sound is uh, a term coined by Eddie, I think. Uh, Eddie Van Halen, RIP. What a loss to the world of music and the world in general, I reckon. Yeah. Uh, that basically explains sonically what a cranked Marshall late 60s super lead plexi sounds like through some poor old Celestian greenbacks that are just going, ah, <laughs> with all of the, the mid-range and uh, dynamic goodness that that combination can bring with a deft right arm. That's the brown sound. It, it, uh, was, it was just like high gain, but not as we expect it today. It was... Um... Yeah, you see, if you listen to that early Van Halen stuff, the live, the live things, the live things that are available on YouTube, it's not really that high gain. It's more about the, the volume, the attack and the attitude. It's very Marshall Super Lead Plexi, but it's not kind of diesel high gain or Bogner high gain or or um, even you know fifty one fifty versions two and three high gain. It's very Marshall. Uh, power amp distortion, I think, rather than preamp distortion, and that's probably where the difference lies. It's in that it's in that power amp volume dynamic, um, because the super lead plexi is not, it, it is not a master volume amp, as you would be aware. It's a beast that's like a mini PA for the for guitar. You, we, there's nothing fizzy about it. It is like, but it's it's not all bass either. It is it's almost sort of like a wide mid frequency just coming at you and hitting you so hard, it makes you need a new underwear. Hence the name, <laughs> the brown sound, uh, and it's just yeah, it's, it's it is lovely. And um, you know the plexi tone, as you were saying before we started filming, you know. If if you want to get that sound from um, from a pedal, then the plexi tone is the one to go for. And what you've done is um, taken the plexi tone, dialed back the gain a little bit because if there's something the plexi tone's got lots of, it's gain, and um, yeah. kicked it up the backside with something just a different flavour, really, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Uh, the, the treble booster, the, the the treble boosters of old added a certain mid range poke and which help uh the darker amps like the ac30 and the jtm 45s uh and the super leads cut through in a in a solo sort of mix almost like a cocked wah hmm. uh, perhaps not as as dramatic as a cocked wah yeah. but it's along the same sort of lines so the 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 term treble booster is almost a misnomer because it was more of a mid-range push than the than than you know a spiky kind of treble thing, if that makes sense, and and uh, and and that's uh, that mixed with often the germanium transistor section because there are not many components in a treble booster, maybe seven or eight, uh, but the germanium added a certain graininess and still does. That's why they're so sought after those old transistors. Uh, that um, a real kind of appealing distortion to the ear, a, a really unique kind of circuit that is. Is hard to emulate, and, and that's why even the clones now are, are, you know, they're not cheap. So something like this that offers a bit of the best of both worlds, I think a lot of guitar players who are fans of the classic rock tones will find, you know, pretty valuable. So tell me the story about how this uh, came to be. So you, you said you were talking to the guys over at Carl Martin and they were asking, um, you know, what can we do? Yeah, I have a, a long-standing uh, friendship with Soren over at Carl Martin, who's a, a, a lovely Danish bloke, and we catch up maybe once or twice a year, every year, for a fairly lengthy chat just to say hello and um, talk about the industry. And, you know, I do that with a few different people from around the world. I'm very fortunate in that regard because I've met so many people through the YouTube exploits. Uh, but um, often... Soren will say, is there anything you think we should be doing uh, or we can build? Have you got any ideas? You know, and I can't blame him for fishing. <laughs> <laughs> and if I have any ideas, I'm only too happy to share them. And I said, well, you've got the plexi tone, which is 
you know, established worldwide as one of the great industry standards of uh, uh, in terms of a Marshall emulation pedal. It's a, a it's a ripper, and but you haven't done it with a boost. And I didn't elaborate on what I meant by a boost. And he said, "Oh, but we have done it with a boost. It's got a boost on the circuit, especially the pro version. You know, the bit, the longer purple one." And I said, "Not that sort of boost. A treble booster." And uh, Soren wasn't entirely familiar with the treble booster um, a thing, and and so I had to do some gentle explanations and and say, well, you know about the Dallas Range Master, the Horn Discus, the BSM line of pedals, which specialises it from um, Germany and and several other companies that have been producing them, and 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 uh, with all due respect, though they weren't overly familiar with what a treble booster was, so uh, I explained and showed them some videos. And then said, "Can you build a pedal with a treble booster in front of it, uh, in front of the plexitone circuit, so that people can enjoy that specific classic rock tone um, under one roof?" And this was probably eighteen months ago. And in the interim, of course, Drybell and a couple of other companies have released pedals that are not unsimilar, but they sound different because they don't have this exact plexitone circuit. So after two or three prototypes were built. Uh, I gave them the thumbs up and they put it in a case and we have the Plexi Ranger. So my idea is not unique. People have been using treble boosters with Marshall circuits since, you know, the Dallas was invented in the mid-60s. Uh, all I've done is suggest to put it in a can, both circuits, uh, with a very, very simple interface so that people can enjoy both and not have to run around and spend a fortune on germanium treble boosters or... Super leg plexis. Yeah. So there it is. You can jack that pedal into a, an amp with, you know, a little bit of clean headroom. Cleaner the better, really, because then, then it will, will allow it to do all its dynamic things uh, and and go for your life. That's the story. And I hope it's successful for them. And for the record, I'm not enjoying any royalties or anything else. It was just an idea for a friend and, uh, you know, to... to Help them along a bit and uh, maybe give the guitar community something fun to use as well. Gotcha. Well, you should be. <laughs> so um, tell me, what's the extra jack for? Is it a remote out? Turn it on and off by remote, I believe. Um, you know what? I haven't even read the, the, <laughs> the manual to find out exactly what it says, but I, I believe it's... Uh, it's just a remote switch if you want to put it, you know, in a in a rack or something like that. I bet, uh, I bet it's for switching the uh, range master side on. I stand guilty of not having a clue. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to look at the manual. It might it might be a TRS out, so you can run. Well, it. I'm thinking a TRS, so you can employ a double foot switch to latch it on and off either circuit. Yeah. Mm, put it into your ES8 or G2 or whatever, and you're away. Yeah. Very cool. Very, very cool. Well, look, um, it's been really, really nice to meet you. Um, I think we've covered it. Um, and, and thanks for taking the time to say hi. No, man, yeah, it's been a pleasure. It really has. So we're going to get on to um, talking to everyone about how they can win one of these. But um, before we do so, should we, do you want to say goodbye? I uh, bid you adieu and uh, thanks for having me and I hope that everybody has a fun time at the Guitar Summit and if possible, go and say good day to Lee and Tonepedia and thanks for having me and best of luck Europe. See you soon. Yeah.